guys, welcome to a new sewing video. It has been months, months since I've sewn anything and it is time because autumn is upon us and that is probably my favorite season for sewing. So a couple months ago, I got this pattern. It is a vintage pattern and it is a vintage pattern for Dickies. I um, wasn't even aware of the existence of the Dickie as an item of clothing, but apparently it is this kind of like faux blouse that is meant to be worn underneath clothing. So basically it's a collar and then the front and back of a blouse coming down to a certain length. And this is perfect, for example, to wear underneath sweaters. I absolutely love the look of a sweater with a little collar just peeking out from the top. So I think now is the perfect time to make these faux blouse, faux collar things. <laughs> If you make them a little bit longer, like they are in the pattern, they are quite long, I think, uh, up until the waist. Uh, you can wear them underneath cardigans as well. And the great thing about this is it won't have to be washed as often because it's not, you know, near your armpits. So yeah, I think I think this is going to be perfect for the fall and winter seasons. So I want to make a couple of these. It's a 1940s um, vintage pattern reproduction. And this is what we're going to work with today. So I got a couple fabrics that I thought would be perfect to make these little collars blouses dickies <laughs> dickies with i got this lovely off-white fabric with an embroidery on top which i think is really really cute i did want to keep the color fairly basic because i don't want to distract too much from the actual sweater that i'll be wearing it with but um, i think this is neutral enough to work with a lot of different styles but still you know a little bit more visually interesting than just the plain cotton so that's the first fabric then i got something similar also with an embroidery but this one also has i'm fairly sure this is called embroidered eyelet fabric really cute a very thin kind of crisp cotton so i think this will be perfect as well and then the third and last fabric i got is just a very simple crisp white cotton for a little bit more of a neutral look so again it's, it's a very nice kind of thin crisp woven cotton material i'm gonna go ahead and choose three of these patterns to make and then we can get started right away and i'm really excited i think this is gonna be a really fun project looking at this pattern i think for my wardrobe i will get the most wear and use out of these and the most versatility if i make version a version e and version b i think d and f are a little bit too much for my wardrobe at the moment and c is pretty similar to E, but I think E is just a little bit cuter. So those three are the ones I'm gonna make. And I do think I'm gonna make them a little shorter, just to wrap chest level, because I did only buy little pieces <laughs> of that embroidered fabric. And if I have a little bit of time left, I might just try and make D as well. D is a detached collar here, just a uh, collar on its own with a little lace trim. I think that's really cute. So I might just make that as well. pattern pieces cut out and laid out here so I decided to do all the facings in that simple white cotton so that I wouldn't waste you know the nice cotton unnecessarily I did also make a mistake um, I didn't consider that this would have a right side and a wrong side so I ended up cutting out my front panels in reverse so it's gonna close like a men's shirt I don't really mind anyways I am now ready to start assembly I did decide by the way to leave this one full length. This is the pattern that I'm making first, is the one with the scalloped edge in the front. And I think that one will lend itself perfectly to be worn with a cardigan or underneath a blazer or something like that. This is the one that I do want to keep full length, like until the waist. Let's get started.
collar is just about done. It has elastics down the side, the collar is ready, it is fully lined. It took me a while to figure out how to do the lining. Instructions were a little bit confusing on that, but now that I have it down, I think the other two are gonna be much faster to make. So the last thing I need to do is buttons and buttonholes. However, I refuse to do real buttons and buttonholes on an item that has elastics down the side, meaning I will never actually use the buttons. So I'm gonna go for faux buttons. Shh, don't tell. I realized just in time, luckily, that my head is larger than my neck. So we have functional buttons after all. <laughs> Good thing my machine does them for me because I was not up for doing them by hand. But yeah, the first one is finished and I love it. It did take me all day. I did of course do the prep work and everything as well, but I think maybe doing two in a day tomorrow may be a little bit ambitious, but I'm gonna try anyway. We'll see how far I get. One down, two to go. I will see you guys tomorrow. It's a new day and I could not resist wearing my new faux collar straight away. I absolutely love it and I am ready to make more. The one that I'm gonna start out with today is this one, the one with the bow tie front. And for some reason I thought this one would be more complicated than the one I made yesterday, but turns out it is much simpler. It only has three pattern pieces. The discerning feature about version a, this one's version A, is that it has the tucks in front, of course, but they are very clearly marked on the pattern piece, so I think that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna start by pressing those tucks and then stay stitching, and then it's straight onto assembly, so should be quick enough. Let's get started. I was overconfident this morning, very much so. It is three o'clock and I haven't even finished the first one, let alone two of them. <laughs> I have the fronts and backs, everything is finished properly and hemmed and faced and uh, I don't know, everything is done. <laughs> the last thing I need to do is buttons and buttonholes and once again I am gonna have to do real ones. I also decided for this one, by the way, to do the full length. I don't really know why I keep doing that, but I have enough fabric. I thought I would have less fabric, but the length of one of these pattern pieces is exactly the width of the fabric I have, so I might as well. Buttons for the second one, and for this one I'm actually thinking of using the buttons that I originally bought for my wedding dress. I don't know if you remember, this was a long time ago, but I got these pearl buttons to go on the back of my wedding dress, but they weren't the right color. They were a little bit too cool for my off-white wedding dress, so I ended up not using them. I bought different ones, but I do still have them, and I think they would actually go perfectly with this blouse or faux 
blast front because this one is actually stark white and oh yes this is gonna be perfect so i'm gonna use these and that's gonna be this one done let's keep going I've changed my mind considering the time <laughs> and how much longer these actually take than I thought. I mean, it has been months since I've sewn anything, so honestly, I can't really blame myself. But I have decided to not do a full front thing, but only make the collar out of this last fabric that I bought, the kind of eyelet fabric. Um, I wasn't sure this fabric was the best match for the last pattern that I wanted to make anyway, so I think that just the collar will do it much better justice. So yeah, I have my collar from the fabric, then from the lining fabric, and I've chosen this lace to go with it, which also has the same type of eyelet, and it's honestly the only lace I could find that's the same shade of white, because <laughs> all the other ones are just a little bit off white, and yeah, I, I wanted to match color-wise, and I think this would be great. It's gonna make the collar a little bit bigger, and I hope it won't be comically big, um, but it, it might come out really cute, so we'll just, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna try and we'll see what happens. Let's do it! Alright guys, I have three faux collars to get me through autumn and winter and I absolutely love them. I think they came out really really cute. Even though it's a small project, it is quite complicated, but the pattern does guide you through the whole thing quite well. I will have the exact name and number of the pattern written down in the description box in case you would like to make some of these yourself. But I think this is where I'm going to end this week's video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to be back to sewing and in my new studio space, which I absolutely adore and it's been a dream to work in here, guys. I've been so productive. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more sewing content, which I am going to be making <laughs> from now on again. Have a lovely weekend, guys, and I will see you next week in my new video. Bye!